Okay, so the main thing looking at this, guys, is this is not in our standard form, right? We want to make sure it's set equal to 1. So the first step that we're going to want to do is divide by 100 on both sides. By dividing by 100, 25 over 100 is, can be simplified to 1 fourth. And 5 over 100 can be simplified to uh, 1 25th. One, I was spent to mean this to be a 4. That'd be 20th. Um, let's do that as a 4. Sorry about that. I meant for that to be a 4. Yes, it would be 1 20th. But I'm going to keep that as a 4 as a 25. Because um, I want to keep the numbers kind of rather simple for the first example. So anyways, when you guys go and take a look at this, you can say, all right, now this is in standard form. And it's nice that it's in standard form because now I can identify the uh, vertex, my a and b, rather simply. But we got to remember there's differences here with this equation from what we learned with an ellipse. Well, the center is still the same. That's hk. Now remember, h is always with x, k is always with y. So our center in this case is, remember, it's x minus h, y minus k. So this is going to be negative 2 comma 1. All right. Um, now remember also, our formulas is a squared minus b squared. So in this case, if we're an ellipse, if this was a plus, ellipse, we would always be looking at, oh, a squared is 25, right? a squared is always bigger. But remember, the hyperbola is going to be different. So in this case, my, I'll do it over here. Here, my a squared is equal to 4, and my b squared is equal to 25. Okay. The other thing that's important about looking at this is now we need to identify our c squared. So we could say a is equal to 2, b is equal to 5, right? just taking the square root. And remember, what's, what's a, b, and c? a is the distance from your center to your vertices. b is the distance from your center to your co-vertices. But I want to use this information to find c squared, which is, again, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So a squared plus b squared is 29. Square root both sides, c equals the square root of 29. Um, so I can go ahead and graph the center if I needed to graph this. So I go ahead and graph the center. That's at negative 2, up 1. And I'll just put a nice little c to represent as the center. Now the next thing I need to do is identify, do I have a vertical or a horizontal transverse axis? And remember, the transverse axis is where the vertices and the foci lie. So it's important to know if it's vertical or horizontal. Since my a squared is under my y, I have a <coughs> vertical transverse axis. You don't have to kind of put a dotted line there, but sometimes I like to draw a dotted line just to remind myself that's where my vertices and foci are going to go. So. Um, so I have my center, which is my hk. Now let's say we need to identify the vertices. Well, the vertices are a distance of a from the center. So it's basically up to is one vertice, and down to is my other vertice. Right? So I could write those out as my vertices. I'll just use v to represent that. Now you can look at the graph, or you can think about what value are you really adding and subtracting to your center. Are you adding 2 to the h coordinate or to the y coordinate or to the k coordinate? What are you adding and subtracting 2 from? If you want to go up and down, should you add 2 and to negative 2, or should you add to 1? The 1, right? So really, we're doing, we're doing negative 2 comma 1 plus or minus 2. You're going up 2, and you're going down 2. So I can just do the math, or I can look at my graph. Negative 2, 3, and negative 2, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. All right? To find my foci. Um, that's going to be the same thing, but again, we're adding and subtracting now square root of 29, which is not really a nice number. So I can just leave this, or at least I'm just going to leave this as the representation of 1 plus or minus the square root of 29. Now, you could represent that as two different coordinates, 1 plus square root of 29 and 1 minus square root of 29, but we'll just leave it together as there. I'm not going to worry about finding the covertices because as we look at our graph, the covertices aren't really on our axis. But I'll tell you, I'll show you guys a reason um, next. I'll show you guys how they can actually be important or helpful for us. Um, so let's actually, uh, we'll find the covertices later. Let's, um, let's go and identify. So we have the center, the covertices. Now let's sketch where these, um, let's sketch where these foci should be. So square root of 29. Ugh. Geez, square root of 29. Let's see. Carry the 1. How do you do? Well, let's do something we know. We know the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 6 is 36. So would it make sense that the square root of 29 is somewhere between 5 and 6? Yeah. Right? So I can say it's roughly 5 and some change. So we could go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's going to be between 5 and 6 somewhere. And we could go down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
So it's somewhere between there. All right, so obviously, guys, we know that our parabola is opening up and down. Our <coughs> hyperbolas are opening up and down. But what we want to do is identify the asymptotes before sketching them. So the asymptote for our vertical ellipse is in the equation y equals plus or minus a over b times x minus h plus k. So for this, all I got to do is plug in the numbers. a is 2, b is 5. So I have plus or minus 2 fifths times x minus h, which is plus 2, and then plus k, which is 1. All right. Now, does anybody want to graph these two equations, write the equation to put on the lips? Wouldn't you guys agree with me that trying to graph that is not really going to be that much fun? Because technically, what you have to do is you have to distribute the 2 fifths to the x and to the 2. And then you have to combine those to give you a y-intercept. <clears throat> In addition to that, Harrison, you actually have to do plus or minus. So you have to add it and subtract it. It's not going to be fun. There's two asymptotes. So graphing them using the equation of a line is possible, but it's just not really preferred. So I'll give you guys a little bit of a trick. What you can do is find the covertices, which is 5 to the right and 5 to the left, right? because that's a distance of b. So I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's one covertice. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's my other covertice. And what you can do is draw vertical and horizontal lines with, through your covertices and through your vertices. And what you do when you do that is you create a nice little box. And you notice that the center is still like in the middle, right? Center has to be between the vertices and the covertices. And then what's nice about this is if you were actually to sketch the asymptote based on that equation, you would see that the asymptotes intersect at the center and go through these corners of the box. So it's kind of come nice to draw that box that helps you out. And what this tells me, though, do you guys see like this graph is a pretty wide, right? Pretty wide kind of um, hyperbola. But that's how you get to the graph, basically from there. OK? Where do you guys get it? Cool? Not cool? Semi-cool? Más o menos?